um, any other field? I I, th I think so. I so I I think there's some things that you know generalized takeaways from uh, a lot of the work that I do. So when I'm looking at when I'm doing my instructional design kind of work, I'm generally look going to build a curriculum architecture, which is basically for one or multiple jobs. First of all, what's the performance? What do they do? What are the tasks and outputs produced, blah, blah, blah. And then deriving what are the enabling knowledge and skills. Um, and so part of when we're capturing the performance, the ideal performance, we do a gap analysis on the same page. So we can identify what are the outputs and the key measures. So how do you tell a good one from a bad one? Mm -hmm. And what are the tasks for that output? So we've got this, what I call an output task cluster of data. Output, measure, and then the tasks associated with that, and then the roles and responsibilities, who's doing what, and then that's ideal performance. When master performers talk about it, they go, yeah, I do something very similar to that. I change it a little bit each time, but basically that's what you do. And you can ask them, so now what, what are the gaps? What are the people who aren't master performers? How do they go about doing this work that we just wrote down and pinned down? And they can say, I, can, I always start with, well, here are the outputs and here are the key measures that you guys said were the key measures. Mm -hmm. So what measures do, do the non-master performers, which measures do they typically blow? So we start with the output in mind, the end in mind, and what measures are not being met. And then therefore we can talk about, oh, so that it's late. It's always late. It's never on time. The whole thing was it's got to be on time and non-master performers are always late. So why are they late? So what's the probable gap cause? Now, I can't do root cause analysis and ask why five times on all of these things here. I've got to quickly get off the top of the heads of the people that I'm working with. Why? Why is that a problem? And they'll give me three or four or five different reasons, and then we can look at those reasons and say, you know, which of these are attributed to the person's, the, that individual's knowledge and skills? Is, are, they, are they failing because they don't know any better? Or no, the data is, they're late because the data that they're waiting on is late to them. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do? So you can't train them. You can't train that away. The problem lies elsewhere. And so this kind of data then helps clients begin to think about broader than training. You got some fixes you got to make so that... But new hires wouldn't know how to do those tasks. Yep. So you have a need for training for new hires. But if you're trying to solve a performance problem, um, uh, I'd like to say that uh, training requests for new hires should be expected. And training requests for problem solving should be suspected because uh -huh. most likely training isn't going to you know, resolve the problem. And, and I use the term training meaning a whole bunch of things and I'd actually rather use the word instruction because tr good training is instructional mm. and good education is instructional, but job aids and performance support, they better be instructional, otherwise they're not worth the paper that they're printed on or the electrons that they're you know, showing up on your screen. Um, so we, so instruction to me is a, a, now a better umbrella term for that intervention set because it can be more all uh, um, inclusive of the things that, uh, that we produce, we engineer or architect and uh, to help people do their jobs, whether that's training before they have a need or performance support so they can use that in the workflow. If I can borrow a few new uh, buzz phrase terms. <laughs> and yes, you can. <laughs>